Anxiety is one of those normal human experiences or emotions that unfortunately often leads us to feeling guilt or shame. Sometimes we have these painful reactions to anxiety because we tend to minimize what our brain is afraid of or we think that it shouldn't be reacting in this way. Sometimes we expect ourselves to always be thinking 100% in a logical fashion. Or maybe our anxiety is making us respond or behave in ways that don't totally align with our values and it makes it really hard to trust ourselves and trust our intentions. My name is Katie McLaughlin and I am a licensed professional clinical counselor here in Ohio and I am super passionate about getting mental health education out into the world so it can positively impact your life. And over the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be diving into what anxiety actually is and why we feel so afraid and uncomfortable. Today, we're just going to start at the very beginning and walk through how our brain actually detects these possible threats and starts that whole process of fight, flight, freeze, all those things that you might know already about anxiety. We're just going to start at the very beginning and go from there. At its core, anxiety is our body's fear response. It is our threat detection system, our warning system, and our protective system. Anxiety's number one function and number one goal is to keep us safe and to keep us alive. There are so many different mechanisms that are involved or at play in this broad subject of anxiety. So today we're really just gonna keep it as simple as possible and look at this threat detection piece. There is a very primitive part of the brain called the amygdala. There are actually two of them, but you'll usually just see it in its singular form, so I'm just gonna stick with that. Our amygdala is constantly searching for threats throughout our daily life, and through our ancestry, it's really evolved to be able to go through this threat detection process at a subconscious level, which means we don't even know that it's actually happening. This process is called neuroception. Once a possible threat is actually detected by the amygdala, it then sends signals to other brain structures to turn on these other mechanisms within the body to make sure to keep us safe and alive. So the amygdala learns through experiences, and through each and every one of the experiences throughout our entire life, starting at the time that we're an infant or even when we're in utero, these experiences are categorized as safe or dangerous. The amygdala is basically kind of taking these little snapshots of what's going on, especially in times when we are actually feeling afraid. Now, because these snapshots are so broad and so general through these experiences, and it's not only focusing on the trigger itself that is making us afraid, it's looking at the entire picture, that means that we could be going through our daily life, and if, if the amygdala starts to get a sense for anything from those experiences that might be slightly similar, it starts to send out those signals as if it's detecting a threat which means that the amygdala might remember, you know, what music was on in the background during this triggering situation or what color shirt that mean girl was wearing that one day that you got bullied. And it brings that information into the neuroception process, which means that we can be going about our daily life and maybe we feel fear without really understanding why we feel fear. Now, depending on genetics, family history, our entire life experience, and even sometimes our family members' experiences as well, based on all of these factors, our amygdala is gonna have a certain level of activation. And this level of activation influences basically our level of anxiety. And it can be more or less than other people just because we all go through very different family backgrounds and very different life experiences. And sure, the amygdala is not the only player when it comes to anxiety, but it does play a huge role in this process. And the good news is that there are a lot of different ways to calm the activation in the amygdala and therefore influence the anxiety that we feel on a daily basis. And meditation is actually a practice that has been thoroughly researched and from that research has been shown to lower activation levels in the amygdala. So when we regularly practice meditation or different types of mindfulness in just six to eight weeks, we can start to notice differences and really lowering activation levels in the amygdala and therefore less anxiety in daily life. 
If you'd like to learn more about meditation and just how mindfulness impacts the brain in general, you can check out this video here. Next week, we are going to be diving into what happens after the amygdala or the brain starts to detect a possible threat or an actual threat. So if you haven't done so already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and also that little bell so you can get notified and join us next time.